Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna show you actionable step-by-step -step with job postings, what I would do if I was trying to get a job in cybersecurity in 2022. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So, you know, 2022 is right around the corner. A lot of times at the end of the year, things slow down, people aren't hiring, uh, budgets are kind of locked in, and we're looking forward to the kind of the new year and getting things up and running. So it's a perfect time to kind of line yourself up, get your thoughts right, get your resume tight, and be able to attack the market when we go into the new year. Now, I want to show you that uh, CyberSeek, Dot org. You can see here there is over uh, 600,000 jobs opening right there in the bottom left. And I know it's not exactly one for one, like they're not all entry level. A lot are more senior, but there are entry level ones to be had. And, you know, I really want to highlight that. I'm going to show you three different examples. But the, the key takeaway for this video, and I did this myself in my career, is to take advantage of professional services companies. Now, what does that actually mean? It's, it's like consulting or contracting. Effectively, you, you know, for example, the U.S. government and large companies like Fortune 50 companies, yes, they have their own staff, civilian workforce and such, but a lot of work is actually outsourced to consulting firms. And some of the bigger ones are PwC, Deloitte, Booz Allen. Um, you know, there's just a, a whole host of them, Accenture, Capgemini, et cetera. There's a bunch. And the way that they work is they'll win a contract that say that says like let's say that they'll win a contract that says a, a one person is two hundred dollars an hour. All right, so you can bill two hundred dollars an hour for that person every hour that they're working for the government. Well, the consulting firm turns around and says, "Hey, Jerry, we'd love to offer you a job at effectively a hundred bucks an hour. That's fully loaded to include your benefits and you know time off and and training and all that stuff, and obviously your compensation. But but the takeaway is it's like a hundred bucks an hour for you, and obviously the professional services firm gets in another hundred dollars of revenue for themselves, right? So they're incentivized to hire people because if they win the work, which is part of the hard part. They need to be able to stick bodies on that work, right? And this is what we're going to attack in this video. So let me pull up a couple examples. One such example here. So this is Deloitte. Deloitte is a major global professional services consulting firm. And I've just gone onto their website and looked at jobs at Deloitte. And you can see I've selected cybersecurity at the top there in the middle and entry level. And here are some opportunities. You can see like here, look at this. Deloitte Risk and Financial. I just clicked one randomly, okay? Here's what you do. You work in cyber. That's wonderful. Um, specific areas of responsibility. That's great. Let's talk about qualifications, right? Because that's the one that most people want to know about, right? Looks like you need a bachelor's degree. Okay. That's not outrageous. You do have to travel, okay? And legal to operate in the United States. Perfect. Yeah. You know what you don't see? three to eight years of experience in IT or, you know, 25 years of experience in cybersecurity or a CISP certification, right? This is legitimate entry level, you know, opportunity. And they have, you know, they don't have a million op options like this, but they do have several. Now, I do want to take a minute and point out, and I'll put a link to these all in, in the show description below, but like, I want to take a point and point out that a lot of times, uh, at least before COVID, you know, there was quite a bit of travel. You'll notice with this particular posting that it says 50% travel. That is one of the kind of the downsides. These jobs do pay well, but one of the downsides is that you could have to travel, right? When I used to do this, I worked for Booz Allen, which is another one we're going to look at for six years. And I traveled, you know, I'd say maybe 30% of the time I'd go to Colorado, I'd go to California, I went to the South Pole, I went to New Zealand, right? So there, there's travel and sometimes it's cool. Maybe you're really interested in going to New Zealand or whatever. And you can kind of make it a trip as well. But just know that that's kind of one of the things that you could expect uh, to happen. Although again, with COVID and remote workforce stuff, that may not be the case as much anymore. Let's look at another one here. This one is Booz Allen Hamilton, the company that I worked for, which by the way, was a fantastic experience. Now you can't search um, on entry level as well, but you can see here, these are cyber jobs 
And, you know, there's a bunch here, but you could see senior, mid. So those aren't going to be good ones. Cybersecurity, risk management framework, and compliance analyst. This is a GRC job. Let's just take a look. I haven't looked at these in advance, okay? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so three plus years of experience doing ANA and two plus years die cap. So this really isn't an entry level position and it's more geared for someone who's been working kind of in that DOD space already. Let's see if we can find another one that maybe is a bit better. CSSP analyst and pen tester. So more on the offensive red side. It says Indiana, it could be travel to Indiana. You could have to live there. I'm not sure you'd have to take a look. As an analyst on our SOC team, interesting, okay. That isn't what I think of when I think pen tester, but let's see what the qualifications are. You have to have experience pen testing, using red team tools, okay. Sim, okay. Forensics, okay. Log review, okay. High school diploma, okay. I don't see, this is fine. This is a, uh, this is just like a certification. I think Security Plus actually qualifies as IET level two. A requirement for um, undergraduate degree. There's no years of experience. You literally could get the things that they require of you in this job by doing try hack me, by doing labs, by by working on your own at home environment, using Rangeforce to get some of that seam experience. Right. So this is a perfect opportunity where they're paying uh, or they're seeking skills, practical skills over education, and we're seeing this more and more often where practical skills really are the dominant um, the desire of these employers, okay? Let's look at another one. This is PWC, okay? I just picked one randomly because they can't, they don't have um, the ability to search on entry level, right? But you can see, okay, travel, as I mentioned, there's travel requirements. This is a risk and regulatory guy. So this is a GRC position. Let's look at what the requirements are. You do need a bachelor's degree. Okay, not, not too bad. Minimum years of experience, one year. So I do want to point out this, okay? Yeah, it says one year of experience, but I would argue you can model your resume in such a way if you have been doing home labs, if you've been grinding and, and you know working on um, cyber ranges and reading this documentation for this example, right? Studying how to be an auditor. Maybe you've taken a GRC course. I'm working on one for Simply Cyber, right? I would argue that that is experience, right? At least you can put it on there, make it look good. You're not lying and get the interview and be able to uh, convey, yeah, hey, this is what I've been doing for the last year or more. And I'm ready to be able to hit the ground running. That, that's really what employers want. They want you to be able to hit the ground, start delivering value immediately, right? So I think that those are all really good opportunities. Now, really quick, I know it's kind of late in the video, but this is Simply Cyber. If you're new here, I'm Jerry Ozier. And on this channel, we do stuff like talk about cybersecurity careers, and sometimes we do like real technical labs and stuff like that. So if that's interesting to you, consider checking out the other videos on the channel and maybe subscribe. And I push videos every Monday. We do live streams on Thursday. And Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 8 a.m., I do a 15-minute cyber news of the day briefing with my reflections and such, which is actually a great segue because... Okay, you can find these jobs, right? I've shown you three different ones. Just look for big professional services consulting firms and then look at their job postings. That's what's where they're going to be. But let's say you find a job. Let's spend a minute and talk about how you can really kick butt and differentiate yourself from the other pack, from the people in the pack in 2022, okay? Two critical things that I can't emphasize enough that will complement what you're already doing and will impress the uh, interviewers, okay? Two things. One, you will be asked in your interview, how do you stay current on cybersecurity threats, okay? Cybersecurity moves incredibly fast, incredibly fast, right? So like, like this Apache Log4j thing that happened just recently, right? That's a big news story. You need to be informed on what that is. You don't have to understand how to exploit it, but you've got to be uh, know that it's going on, okay? So how do you stay informed? Well, there's a bunch of different ways. InfoSec Twitter, there's blog posts you can read. What I like to do is listen to the daily CISOseries.com's um, cybersecurity headlines broadcast. Now, you may be new to the industry. You may not have experience to be able to like digest that podcast fully and really appreciate it. And this is why I'm saying that you know, daily, uh, Monday, well, not daily, but men Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I do this uh, morning 
morning broadcast first things first right and it's like literally we listen to a podcast together it's seven minutes long and after each story i pause it and i tell you hey this is this is what i think that this story uh would mean in the in the greater macro picture and what i would what i would do like th this is what you should be educating your end users about or this is what you should be talking to the business about or this really only affects healthcare people or this isn't a big deal really it's it's a cool hack but it's not really a big deal so even if you don't join us uh, monday wednesday and friday right if you if you go to the youtube channel you'll find these live streams available you can hit the bell for notifications because I this particular live stream I start and I just go right into it. Okay, um, if you don't, if that's not your speed, that's cool. But I'm just telling you, you need to stay up to date on current cybersecurity threats because you will be asked how are you doing that in your interview. I guarantee you. Okay, the second thing that you can do that will be absolutely beneficial. Um, especially uh, for finding a job, but for just for your overall cybersecurity career is networking. I can't say it enough, people. Listen, networking, 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 people networking, okay? Not computer networking, that's important, but people networking is super important. And how do you do it? Right now, there's a real, like LinkedIn is pretty good, but I am seeing a massive trend on Discord servers. There are so many different cybersecurity discord server so, you, so what is a discord server if you're not familiar with it right okay so here's my discord server it's an application that you use to access and you can see on the left these are servers so this is the simply cyber one cyber and security black hills information security defcon 940 etc there are tons of discord servers and within each of them are you know these different channels you can see this is a general chat channel but a lot of times there'll be ones like job hunting goal setting mentoring right you can see Black Hills Information Security has a very, very active community, right? So you can you can get in here, you can talk to people, um, and you can share ideas. You can lurk. It's very easy to lurk and just listen and, and inject when you want. You can find very specific things. Like let's say you're big on wanting to do forensics on Android mobile devices, right? That's like your your bag. There's probably a Discord server for like mobile malware or uh, malware or Android security, right? First of all, second of all, like a big a big server like Black Hills might even have a channel just for de dedicated to talking about that. The point is, you need to engage the community. And I'm sorry if you're uh, self-identify as an introvert. There is an opportunity and a way for introverts to be socially engaging and networking as well as extroverts. Okay, so it's it's very important. Um, for, for your overall career success. Uh, I assure you, you can succeed without networking, but it will be a, a tougher challenge, uh, I guarantee you. Okay, so that's gonna do it. I hope that you have enjoyed uh, finding these these jobs and you know, kind of the mechanism that you can use to get, you know, to, to identify these jobs and apply for them. Okay, so we talked about the jobs. We talked about how you can stay informed. Now, for, maybe you don't have a great resume. Maybe you don't know how to like capture the at home lab experiences that you've been doing or the cyber ranges you've been doing. I just want to remind people that it's simply cyber.io, which is my website. I have an absolute free bucket of resources. You can see across the top there, free resources. If you go down in, in uh, a little bit, cyber resume template, all the way at the bottom, it'll take you automatically. I have a couple different letters or resumes here. And this one right here, the third one, this one is how you can highlight your home lab experience. If you don't have actual working cybersecurity job experience and you want to be able to convey a year of experience, this resume format will definitely help you. And I've even got a resignation letter here so you can tell your current job that you quit when you get the cybersecurity job that you want. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode. I right, really appreciate it. Thanks for staying to the end. I hope you're well. And until next time, stay secure.